Hi everybody, this is Simon from the triathloncoach.com. Welcome back. And today we're going to be looking at post Ironman recovery. Now, um, the months of June, July and August are typically the most popular ones for Ironman races in Europe. And so I guess this particular subject is going to apply to most of you that are doing Ironman either now having just done things races like Austria or France or maybe in a few weeks when you finish Germany, Switzerland or Ironman UK. So uh, it's just as if not more important than the training you did prior to your race because if you want to race well in the future, <coughs> excuse me, if you want to race well in the future it's important that you get a good recovery now otherwise your next training will be starting off with you in a comp compromised position. So let's look at some of the stuff that I've got on the board behind me that I've already prepared. Um, we're going to ignore this, we're going to ignore the training here to start with. And I want to look at things like lifestyle. Now, in order to recover, you need to get more sleep. Um, that will happen naturally. I should imagine if you've had um, a, a good performance, you'll have put a lot into it. And don't forget that it's not just the race you're recovering from, it's the months leading up to that as well. So maybe six months to a year's worth of training you're trying to get over with. So don't expect to sort of feel normal after a couple of days. Um, I think Gordo Byrne once said um, that if you have a personal best performance, it requires a personal best recovery. So put as much effort into this as you did into your race. Okay, first thing, uh, post-race blues. It's inevitable when you prepare for a big event, whether it's a wedding or a massive party or an Ironman, that you are going to feel a sense of um, loss perhaps when, when you've done the race because uh, what you were training for is now done and uh, you've got nothing to fill, fill the empty spaces in your life. So don't, don't worry too much about that, it will pass. It's part of, um, part of the recovery process. This is where I think you need to chill out. You need to do other stuff. Relax with friends, go out for dinner, eat the things you denied yourself um, in the lead up to the race, gain a bit of weight. Um, probably best not to be at your racing weight all year round. Make sure you do celebrate your achievements. Far too many people, in my opinion, move straight from one success, by which I mean completing a race, onto the next one without actually stopping to think of the magnitude of what they've achieved. And when you finish an event like this, it puts you into a very, very small select group of people in the world. So take time to enjoy that. Um, I guess as well that in, in order to do the training, you will have had to have leaned on, um, take, lent on people's goodwill for them to take up the slack of you doing household chores, uh, things at work, um, not seeing your friends as much. And so now you have the spare time, like all good loans, uh, they have to be repaid. So now is the time for you to repay that goodwill. In terms of nutrition, I've no doubt, because I've been through this myself, that when you've spent a whole day eating sugary power bars, energy bars, gels and drinks, and flat Coca-Cola, that you want something nice and savoury. And the day after a race, I always long for a full English breakfast. The fatter, the better. But you can't go on like eating like that. In fact, the sooner you re return to eating what I call good quality food, um, the better this is going to be for your recovery. And you need to really be looking at three things. Refueling, so that's going to take place in the one or two days immediately after the race by, by um, eating carbohydrates. You need to repair, that repairing the muscles, the muscle soreness, um, the muscle cells from all that damage. That will take a bit longer and that's through good quality protein, fish and meat, lean fish and meat. Um, and then you need to replenish, you need to replenish uh, the, the whole system with vitamins and minerals. So that's fruit and vegetables, lots of variety, lots of healthy food, fresh stuff. Alright, so I guess you probably wanted to know about the training. Um, there's a few questions up here which I'll come back to in a minute. So my, my suggestions for week one after race, the first seven days, is just be active. Move around, get the blood pumping through the muscles, taking away the old blood, the old damaged red blood cells and the toxins that are built up in your muscles and replace that with fresh stuff, um, which you're going to supply through your good nutrition. Um, generally, I don't advise any running. You don't want to increase that sort of impact damage, certainly not for the first week. 
In the second week, go back to some activity, but I like to call it exercise, so we don't think of it as training to keep fit, it's just keeping moving, but maybe doing a little bit more. But keep it unstructured, so if you don't feel like it, don't bother doing it, and if you do, do it, but do it for fun. No, so no heart rate monitors, no Garmin's, no stopwatches, no power meters. Um, up, to, up to about 30 minutes a day, and then the same the next week, but up to about 60 minutes a day. In week four, go back to your normal, what would be your normal recovery week. So if that's six or seven hours of structured training, a couple of sessions in either sport, then that's fine, go back to that. And so that in week five, you can return to normal training. Okay. That doesn't mean that you are going to be recovered. It may take you more than that. It may take you six weeks, which is fine, just extend all of that. There's, there's nothing that says on day 28 you're going to be ready to train. A lot depends on how hard you've gone and how much you put into it and, and lots of other things like lifestyle and recovery and all the rest. So, you know, you've got to make these decisions yourself. Uh, but what I do know is if you start training too soon um, and, and that keeps happening over a period of years, then, um, and I have first-hand experience of this, uh, you could end up with an overtraining or chronic fatigue type of sy syndrome. So... Just be very careful. So the, some of the questions you might have, what if I have a race in the next four weeks? Well, if you'd asked me before, I would have said don't put, put that pressure on yourself. You may prove me wrong and race very well, but it would, might extend your recovery time. You may race badly, in which case you'll feel bad and wish you hadn't entered. So I'd think twice about entering that and doing it and going hard. What about, um, do I really have to take four weeks to recover? Well, your body's probably got a dozen or so systems, not just the muscular system, so just because your legs don't hurt anymore, it doesn't mean that your pulmonary system, your cardiovascular system, your central nervous system have all fully recovered. To find out would require some pretty invasive tests if they are available. I, I'd reckon that you probably don't have access to those, so I like to take a cautious approach and add a bit more time on, so I'm sort of covering all my bases rather than trying to get back to work too soon. So. Um, yeah, it's up to you. You don't have to take the four weeks, but listen to your body and think of your long-term health. Um, and the converse of that is, what if I don't feel ready at four weeks? Is Well, if you don't feel ready, as I said before, just don't train. So that's it. Um, it's not hard and fast rules to say that probably the most important thing is you listen to your body. It will tell you when it's ready to train. If you don't feel like it, don't feel like it. But be assured, the next step after a peak, which is where you were at Ironman, is down. You can't stand on K2 and walk straight across the summit of Everest. You have to go down the valley and start climbing back up again. So it's no point in sort of wishing you could hold on to the great fitness you've had. Anyway, I hope that helps. If you've got any alternative ideas, please do let me know. You can reach me on the blog or on our Facebook page. But until next time, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch up with you again soon.